all the time. And we thank Ms. Pat for thinking about that. And we have had and continue to have a lot of things going on uh, around us and around the country and around the world. So we thank them for that. Ordinary made extraordinary. <clears throat> you know, as human beings, even though we're God's children, uh, we think many times that we are very insignificant and the things that we do don't really matter and no one really notices what we do. Uh, and uh, yet the Bible tells us the exact opposite of that, that we're all special. We're all made in his image where <clears throat> no one else is exactly like us. Mm -hmm. And in the body of Christ, it's not just those that we see doing things that matter. It's all of us together working together as a body of believers to accomplish the things that he wants us to accomplish. And when we get to the point that we think a few individuals are going to bring about everything that needs to be brought about, then we have completely missed the message of the Bible. Uh, we have to know that uh, through each of us, uh, God can work wonderfully marvelous things and we just have to be available to him so that he can do that. I read once about a, a funeral service about a man named Old Thomas and Old Thomas would nod off in the church services and uh, didn't seem very significant at all and he died and uh, there was only two people there at the funeral, his daughter and son-in-law and then as they left uh, the church, there was a very expensive looking car that followed them to the cemetery. And uh, <clears throat> as they got to the cemetery, this man got out uh, dressed in his military uniform and uh, said that he had seen in the paper where old Thomas had died. And he said that old Thomas was his Sunday school teacher year before years before that, and that he had made fun of him and laughed at him as we do a lot of times as, as children uh, when, we're, when we don't really understand the seriousness of what's being, being said. And this man said, uh, uh, I'm sure that sometimes all of us feel like we're failures, but he said, I have no doubt that if it hadn't have been for old Thomas, I would have never come to know the Lord. So we, we do ordinary things as ordinary people and God takes those things and turns them into extraordinary things, turns us really into extraordinary people. We, we read about the people in the Bible all the time and we think about how wonderfully extraordinary they are, but they were just ordinary people that yielded themselves to the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit caused them to be extraordinary people instead of ordinary people. Many times we feel like old Thomas, I think, that we don't really make any difference to anyone. Or maybe we feel like his daughter and son-in-law that uh, nobody really cared and there really wasn't anything that old Thomas did. Uh, and Many, many times we feel so insignificant. And I know in years past I have felt that way until I realized that I didn't have to be significant to people in this world as long as I yielded myself to the power of God and let Him make me to do extraordinary things. Uh, and, and many times we think because we're not teachers, we're not pastors, we're not deacons, we're not leaders of any of the groups that we're not important. But that's what I want us to think about today, that every person that's a child of God is important. Amen. And every person that's a child of God has their place in church. It may just be to smile to everyone and hug people and, and give them a, a, a word of encouragement. I, I, I love the passage uh, that, that, that uh, Paul was bringing to those at Thessalonica that talks about 
the dead in Christ will rise first and then those that remain will be taken up. And, uh, and at the end of that passage, it says comfort one another with these words. And so we ought to come together and comfort each other uh, all the time and let each other know how, how special we really are. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's, it's something that's very important. We don't have to have accolades. We don't have to have praise. We don't have to be told how important we are all the time, although it, it, it makes us feel a little bit better, doesn't it, to know that we're, we're appreciated. Uh, but we should, we should always remember that we have to depend upon, upon God's guidance. We have to have ourselves placed in the right position in the kingdom of God. We have to then yield to the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Uh, unless we do these things, we're going to be insignificant. And nothing good is going to come through us because we're depending on our own power. We're depending on our own strength. We're depending on our own abilities to do things instead of yielding ourselves uh, to the power of God through the Holy Spirit. I want us to uh, look at these verses in Mark 4, 26 through 32 and see what God has to say to us. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. You see, we sow seeds of faith around us, of the, the message of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit takes these and he convicts people as we spread those seeds and then God brings about the harvest. There's nothing that we do except that we scatter the seeds. We're his, his tools, his instruments in this life, an extension of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said to them, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds of, on the earth in comparison to those in Israel that was sown. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may rest under its shade. So I want us to examine these verses and see what extraordinary things can be brought about <clears throat> in uh, ordinary people. First thing is this, kingdom growth is a cooperative effort. Kingdom growth is a cooperative effort. No one person is going to bring about the things that, that, that uh, are needed in a body of believers. We're all in it together. Uh, each person has their own abilities. Each person uh, is able to do specific things. Each person needs to let the, the, um, the uh, fruit of the Spirit grow within them to that full measure so that they can become who God wants them to become. Uh, God's word, uh, remember in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, the people at Corinth had their problems. They had their divisions. They had all the different things that Paul wrote to them about. But notice in 1 Corinthians 12, 20 through 27, Paul said this, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Many of us, many of us in each church, but yet we're one body in Christ in this church. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Those that are not the showy gifts, those that are not the ones that we see so much. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable on these, we bestow greater honor and our, unrep our unpresentable parts have great modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having even greater honor to that part which lacks it. Uh, that, so that there should be 
no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members should suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you, us, are the body of Christ and members individually. I like to liken this as uh, harmony, I think is what you would call it. Brother Stephen can correct me if that's wrong. When you have a band or you have an orchestra or you have a, a choir and everybody has their part and they all bring their parts together but you get one, one sound out of it, one beautiful sound. And you know, I've said this before, we had a um, annual meeting of the Rehoboth Baptist Association over at Unity Baptist Church one time, and the orchestra from Second Baptist came and played. And you could close your eyes, and you couldn't really distinguish any instrument that was playing, but they were all playing. And it was all together, and it, it just brought about one beautiful sound. And that's the way the church should function. But we can't do it with just one or two people that seem uh, to be the ones that bring about everything. We have to have people play on the piano. We have to have people singing in the choir. We have to have people bringing the message, people teaching Sunday school, people encouraging us, people working here and there and everywhere people doing everything that brings us all together and harmonizes, so to speak, so that everything comes about in a beautiful way. Our verses uh, draw from the field of agriculture. The farmer casts the seeds, goes about his business, leaves the rest to God, the rain, the sun, the nutrients, and then he brings in the crop. You know, I love, uh, Kat and I were, down south of here just this morning and she was saying how beautiful everything was down there it's farm country we had cotton we had peanuts we had corn we had soybeans we had everything all around and it's uh, just a beautiful sight to see god's earth out there and everybody using it the way that it's been intended to be used but it reminds us that the farmer planted the seed, did everything he could, but God is the one that brings the increase. And then us, we do everything that we can do, but we have to understand God is the one that brings the increase. We do not own the kingdom. We're, we are part of it. We're caretakers. We're ambassadors for Christ here in, 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 in the lives that we live. Second thing is this. Kingdom growth begins very small. We read that in our verses. Uh, Jesus used the example of the mustard seed, smallest of all those uh, the Jews uh, sowed. But it grew to large, larger proportions. Remember our verses. Then Jesus said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may rest under its shade. Here's the key. Our smallest effort, the smallest effort that we think we can bring about will help produce great results in the kingdom of God because we are yielding ourselves and the abilities that God has given us, the spiritual gifts that God has given us so that he can take those and then use those so that he brings about great things in the kingdom of God. You may be thinking, well, I have no visible spiritual gifts, no showy gifts. I seem very unimportant. Uh, I remind you of, of a situation I I've told you about many times before about a man in Florida that couldn't read and couldn't write, but he memorized John 3, 16, and he led hundreds of people to Christ because it wasn't him, it was the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that took what he gave to them and convicted them of sin, and they turned their lives over to Jesus Christ. 
And in the Bible, we have those rude and crude fishermen in the New Testament, tax collectors in the New Testament, farmers that became prophets in the Old Testament. Uh, we may never know in this life what a small act of kindness might do, a smile, a hug. You know, sometimes uh, I have hugged people and they would say, I needed that. I needed that. They might, they might have had a terrible time that day, but they just needed to know somebody cared.